Welcome to Python Advanced 8, Database Interaction. In this video we'll be looking at database interaction with Python. Every video will have all slideshows and code available in the description. Some quick preamble, as this tutorial is all about interacting with a database, knowing SQL or at least a basic understanding of SQL and how databases work is necessary if you want to follow along. If you want to work with databases I highly recommend learning SQL and how it works. Ok, so what is database interaction? Interaction with a database is the connecting to and querying of a database. This could be inserting new data, creating new tables, deleting data, modifying data or just viewing data. These databases can be on web servers, the local machine or even database files. We use the SQL language to talk to databases and we can use Python to send those commands. This is great for programs that need to store lots of data, scripts that manage or clean up databases, and scripts that back up the database, and there's many more, but for now. Python supports a wide range of databases. Python has written a standard for how a database module should communicate with a database. This means that all the different modules that talk to a certain database all have the same methods. Some of the supported databases are things like MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, SQLite, and many more. Let's quickly have a look at the main methods we use for database interaction. Firstly, the connect method. This is the first method we use when we want to talk to a database. The connect method is usually the only method that will have differences from other modules. Sometimes this method will take an address, a user and a password. Sometimes it will take an address, a user, password and database name. And other times it will only just take the database name. Next is the cur cursor method. This method will return a new cursor object that allows the executing of queries and holds the temporary data. We then have the execute method, which belongs to the cursor object and executes a single SQL statement. Fetch1 method also belongs to the cursor, grabbing the first row of data that is in the current re query result. Again, the fetch, me fetch all method, like the fetch1 method, return However, it returns a list of lists of the current query result. The commit method belongs to the connection object, and it saves any changes made to the database in the preceding queries. The rollback method rolls back any temporary changes made in the preceding queries, pretty much the opposite of the commit method. We then have close, which also belongs to the connection object, and it safely closes the connection. Finally, we have the execute many and execute script. These methods execute multiple queries on the database. One is parameter based and the other is a single script. We'll have a look at this in one of the examples. Okay, let's get ourselves set up. We're going to use SQLite as it comes with Linux and it's simple to install and use. SQLite stores all of its contents in a single file. Okay, so I'll come across to Ubuntu. Now, to install SQLite, we do our sudo apt-get install, and it's SQLite3. And that'll find it, and it will install it, and I've already got it installed, so it told me that it's already installed. Okay, so once it's installed, we can quickly create a database by running SQLite3. So, SQLite3 and then the name of the database. So we'll call it test, test.db and that will open up SQLite with a temporary file of test.db. Now we can make it save the file if we run a SQL statement. So let's just check the version. So select SQLite underscore version and then we put some brackets on the end and then we end it with a semicolon and this will return the version of SQLite that we're currently currently running okay now we can exit out of SQLite by typing dot exit and that will exit it out and now we can look at our directory so ls-la and that will show us up show up the new database that we just created called test.db okay so we're now set up Let's jump onto some code now. So let's create a basic program that just prints out the version of the SQLite database. And we'll call it uh, database test.py. 
So I'll come back over to Ubuntu and let's create our Python file. So vim and we'll call it database test test.py. Okay. Now inside our uh, program, we'll define our main function. So we want to import SQL light three, and we're going to define our main. So def main. Okay. So in our main, we're going to create our connection. So we'll call our connection con. And we'll make that equal to SQLite three dot connect, and then we're going to pass in the name of the database. So test dot db is the file name. Okay, now we need to create a cursor object, and this cursor object will execute our statements for us. So we'll call it cur, or you could call it cursor equals con. So our connection dot cursor so that'll get a cursor a new cursor object for our current connection we can then use our cursor to execute statements so cursor dot execute and we'll pass it an SQL statement so I'll do select and we'll do SQL light underscore version and we'll end our statement. Okay, now we've sent our query off to the database. Uh, our cursor will currently hold the result of that query. So to get the result, we need to create a new variable. So we'll call it data, and that equals the cursor dot fetch one. So that'll fetch the first row in the results, and we can print that out. So print and we'll do the SQL height version and we'll add on the data so that'll print out the current version and now we'll close off our connection so con dot close and that's our main written so we'll write our if now so if name is equal to main then we're going to run main yep okay so we'll save this and we'll give it a run so python database test dot pi and whoop got an error Ooh. It's trying to print out something that it can't, so I put a string around that. STR around the data. Let's right quit that and we'll try running it again. And there we go, we get SQLite version is 3.7.9. Okay, so that's our first program done. Okay, so let's modify our database test.py to create a table of pets and their prices. We'll use some exception handling to make sure that we don't break our database. Okay, so we'll come back to Ubuntu again, and we're going to modify our database test. Okay, so in our database, we're going to, in our main, we're going to add a try. So we're going to do try. And this will do, this will handle all our connections. So inside our try, we're going to have all of our printing out and such happening. And then in our catch, well, our accept, oops, accept, we're going to catch any SQLite three dot errors and any other errors as e okay and now inside our accept if there's a connection open so if con 
we're going to con dot roll back. So this will roll back any changes that has been made. Because if there's an error, we don't want to do half of the changes if it didn't work. And now, finally, so after the accept, finally, we're going to if con, so if the connection is still open, we're going to close the connection. Okay, so now let's, let's go on to our try now. Now, we're going to remove our print statement for the version because we don't need the version anymore. And we can leave all of our cursor and our connects because they work. And we're just going to add some more execute statements. So first we're going to create a table. So create table. And we'll call the table pets. And that will take an ID. which will be an int. It will take a name, which will be text. And it will take a price, which will be an int. Okay, so that's our create table done. Let's execute some more commands. So cur.execute and we'll use double quotes this time because we're going to need to use uh, single quotes and we'll insert into pets into the table pets the values 1 and we're going to put in cat and we'll make it 400 Oop, 400 Okay, now let's add in a few more things. So, code.execute and we'll insert into pets the values and we'll put in two and we'll put in a dog and the dog can be 600. Okay. So uh, we could add more, but what we'll do is we'll just add only two this time. And we'll use the con dot commit. So we want to commit all the changes that we've made. Now we can use our cursor again. So cur dot execute. And we'll just check that everything's been added in correctly. And we select star from pets which means it will select everything it can from pets. And then instead of just using fetch one, what we'll do is we'll use fetch all. So we'll grab all of the data that was found in the query. And we'll use a for, for loop, so for row in data. We're going to print the row. Okay, so this is our exception handling. So if there's any errors while creating the table or inserting data into pets, it will roll back any of the changes. And we could also add a print statement here. So we could do, after it's rolled back, we could print out going, there was a problem with the SQL. Okay. Now if we save this, we can run it, so Python database test, and as you can see it's created a table and it's added in two items, cat and dog, uh, for 400 and 600, and it's been able to select that and print it out. Okay, cool, so that works. So let's go back to the slides. Now, let's look at making multiple queries. The Python database standard allows us to make multiple queries using the methods execute script, which takes a string of queries separated with a semicolon, which if you've worked with SQL before will be quite familiar. We are also provided with the execute many method, which takes a tuple of tuples to allow, to allow us to use 
as data in a string template. Okay, so let's modify our code again. This time we'll insert all of the data using one query. We'll also add some extra data in using the execute many method. We, so just so we can see how it's used. Okay. So I'll come back over to Ubuntu and we'll modify our program again. And this time we're going to change our execute statement and we'll make it execute script. So this will execute a script. And what we'll do is we'll use triple quotes to make our string continue until it hits another triple quote. And we'll put that ending after the dog is entered. So do triple quotes there. And we're going to need to remove our execute statements. So we can remove these and we'll just tab it back in. And we need to remove all of our end brackets and put semicolons instead. And once we've removed all of our function names, we should get something that looks similar to this. Where we have all of our data being added in just the one script and it creates the table as well. We'll also add a statement at the start. So we'll knock our create table down and we'll add a statement at the start here that's drop table if exists pets. So because we've already created the table, we don't want to have an error where it tries to create the table again when it already exists. So we'll drop the table if it exists. Now, let's add some more data in. But this time we'll use a tuple of tuples. So we'll create a uh, tuple called pets and we'll make that equal to a tuple and we'll make the data three and a rabbit and we'll make the rabbit 200. And we'll do four and we'll make that a bird. And we'll make the bird 60. And we'll add one more in and we'll make it a 5. And we'll make it a goat. And we'll make the goat 500. Okay, and we'll close off that tuple. Now we've got a tuple of data. We can use the cur.execute many method, which takes a template SQL, so we can use insert into pets values, and then inside our values brackets, we can do question mark for the first placeholder, comma, question mark for the second placeholder, and question mark again for the third placeholder. And we can close that template off. Then as a second parameter, we can pass in pets, and this will execute many statements using all of the values in pets. And now we can commit and we'll select all and we'll fetch all and then we'll print the data back out. So let's save this and we'll have a look at adding how it adds multiple bleh, more things into our database. And we'll try running it again. And this time we get all of our data has been added and we get cat, dog, rabbit, bird and goat and they've all been added to the one table. So that's a useful tool using the execute many and storing all of your data in a tuple. Okay, so I'll come back to the slides here. Some notes to keep in mind is that most databases have their own module. However, this code should work on all of them. Only the connect method might change. When executing statements, avoid using the percent operator for inserting variables into your strings, as it can be abused. Rather, just put the string into a single tuple and use the optional parameter for the parameter parameterized queries. I hope you now have an understanding of how to talk to databases using Python. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Next, we're going to cover C extensions. Thanks for watching.